AFL Studio includes several different methods to aid its use in a live context. With live mode switched on in the playlist, a small arrow appears next to each pattern name that when pressed while FL Studio is playing will cause that pattern to play. This allows you to add and remove patterns from those currently playing, giving you the ability to spontaneously improvise the arrangement of your song. You can either activate a pattern manually with the mouse or trigger the pattern using the notes on your MIDI controller keyboard. This functionality is activated by selecting a MIDI channel in the Options menu System MIDI Settings dialog next to the heading Playlist Live Mode MIDI Channel. Here I have set it to MIDI Channel 3. For this to work, I'll have to make sure the MIDI channel on my MIDI controller keyboard is set to 3. You will need to consult the documentation of your controller keyboard to find out how to do this. The white notes from C4 on the keyboard will trigger successive patterns. So C4 will trigger pattern 1, D4, pattern 2, and so on. To deactivate a pattern, press its corresponding key again. To make life easier for yourself when preparing for performance, you might want to name each pattern such that you include the name of the MIDI note to which it is assigned. When activating a pattern, playback will not commence until the start of the next bar. Something that you might find useful to aid your live performance is to colour code patterns that belong to a particular section of the arrangement. Here I have assigned one instrumental part to each pattern. Bass is on one pattern, drums are on another. This gives a lot more flexibility to manipulating the arrangement. The downside to this approach though is that a lot more keys are used to cover all the available patterns, which makes managing everything a bit more complex. Every person's needs will be quite different in this context, but one useful approach to managing a large complicated performance is to have each section of the song assigned to one octave of your keyboard, i.e. part 1 is assigned to the range C4 to B4, and part 2 is assigned to the range C5 to B5 and so on, like I have done here. If you also assign similar parts to the same relative key within an octave, example the bass is always assigned to the C key, you will have a lot less to think about during the performance. With this kind of setup, you may even find that you don't need to spend so much time looking at your computer screen, giving you more opportunity to actually perform to your audience. If you want to perform a song which already has a defined arrangement, then you can use the song marker jumping function. This works similar to the live mode, whereby the song playback head jumps to successive patterns when you press a key on your MIDI controller keyboard. You'll need to set the MIDI channel for this to a different number in the MIDI settings dialog. Here I have set it to 2. Once again, your MIDI controller will need to have its output channel set to the same number as to what is set in the MIDI settings. The keyboard layout is similar to live mode as well. C4 will jump to marker 1, D4 to marker 2, and so on. In this mode, the black keys also have a function. To jump to the next and previous markers, press the two black keys to the right of C4, C sharp 4, and D sharp 4. The next three black keys, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp 4, will select the previous marker region select the next marker region and deselect a selected region. In addition to selecting the next or previous marker region, pressing F sharp and G sharp 4 will cause the playback head to jump to the start of the selected area. In the next octave up, the two black keys C sharp 5 and D sharp 5 will jump to the next and previous bar, similar to rewinding or fast forwarding the playhead. Playing the remaining three black notes will add or remove a marker at the current playback position when F sharp 5 is pressed, and then holding down G sharp 5 and clicking somewhere on the timeline will select the region between the current playback position and wherever you click. This is similar to holding down the N key on your computer keyboard and clicking in the timeline. 
For the most part, though, you'll probably find that simply holding down the control key and clicking and dragging in the timeline will be the fastest and most accurate way to select timeline regions. The final black key, A sharp 5, has the same function as A sharp 4, which deselects the currently selected region. The market jumping functionality isn't just useful for live performance. If you have a MIDI controller that allows you to assign MIDI notes to its buttons, then you can set up external transport control for fast forward, rewind, etc. All of these functions are available as key commands as well. See the advanced tutorial on workflow for more on these. You have probably noticed in the MIDI settings dialog there is an additional MIDI channel routing that relates to muting generated channels. Once again, this works in the same way, using MIDI notes to control the muting and unmuting of each generator channel. Here I have set the generator muting MIDI channel to 4. Underneath this setting is the toggle on release button. This causes the channel to play back only while its particular key is held down. This is really useful for fast muting and unmuting of channels. The channel muting function can be a lot of fun, particularly for mixing and cutting up beats on the fly. Here I have four of the drum loops that come with FL Studio loaded up into individual fruity slicer channels. When I press play, I can mute and unmute channels continuously by pressing the first four white notes starting from C4. C4 will mute and unmute channel 1, D4 will mute and unmute channel 2, and so on. Each time a channel is muted, a MIDI note off message is sent to that channel. This is why I loaded the loops in a fruity slicer because then I can start and stop playback within the length of the loop. This doesn't work if you have pre-rendered your loops and then loaded them into normal sampler channels. For added fun, I have linked the pitch knob on each slicer channel settings dialog to a knob on my MIDI keyboard, so the one knob will alter the pitch of all four loops at the same time. Other things that you might get into to add variety to your performance is to play around with the piano roll presets in each slicer channel, particularly the random and reverse presets. That brings us to the conclusion of this tutorial. With practice you'll find the three different modes of triggering individual patterns, jumping to song markers and muting and unmuting generator channels will considerably add to the live possibilities existing in FL Studio.